I love about paddling is the ability to get out there and just utilise the different things the ocean throws up at us. The wind, the weather, the waves, when you're out in the nature, out in the elements, it just feels like home. Getting up when the sun is just coming up, you take your boat out, you put it on the water and there's an incredible sense of peace and calm. For me it's more like meditation in some way, almost like separated from reality, from the real world. It's the one time that I feel like I can get away from everything. My thoughts are purely on paddling. Everything else that's distracted me just completely evaporates from my mind. The fact that you're sort of at the mercy of something else, something you can't control. The feeling of being so small and insignificant in, in the world and you're pretty much on your own. I feel this deep feeling of freedom when I'm out in the ocean. Racing is another level. When I think of racing, I think of pain. <laughs> It feels like your muscles are exploding, you feel like you're overheating, you're just going to fall apart. Your heart rate's over the roof, it's a whole different spectrum of um, pushing yourself to the limits. At the end of an event you shouldn't be feeling like you've just gone for a paddle, you should be feeling like you've almost killed yourself to get to the end. My dad always used to say it's hurt, pain and agony and then finish off with ecstasy. You might never want to do it again but 15 minutes later it's like the best experience. Very hard on your body, but if you can get your mind to conquer your body's pain, you'll be at the front every time you compete. The top athletes spend thousands of hours training for what they do. You can see the thirst and the hunger to win, and you can see the doggedness. And if you think you've got what it takes, this is the place to show it. The biggest surf ski event in the world, the Shore and Partners WA Race Week. A lot of people confuse ocean paddling with kayaking and really they're two completely different sports. People paddle kayaks from all over the world but for the most part that's on flat water where ocean paddling or surf ski is different is that you're supposed to be in those elements, often the open water or the ocean and try and use those conditions to your advantage. The biggest part of that is downwind paddling so ocean ski paddling is predominantly about surfing the waves and being able to ride, chop, downwind. The beauty of the skis is they're designed to be able to fit in between the chops and, and move across the face of the chops. It all started in Durban, South Africa. We took the spec skis that came out of Australia and started making them more like a K1, very narrow and very fast. So in the beginning it was all about head bashing into the wind, with the wind, but we all knew the best part of paddling a surf ski is going downwind at high speed and sort of letting the ocean take you along, sitting on a wave doing nothing. Participation in the sport has grown and so too has the number of races. There's major events on every continent in the world now, but the biggest is the Shore and Partners Doctor. That's a 28 kilometre crossing from Rottnest Island to Sorrento. When I was 14, I did a crossing event and the race went from Fremantle to Rottnest. It was actually really, really fun to do that. And I, li I like the idea of a crossing my idea came from the fact that we uh, get everyone over there in the morning and 90% of the time in summer you're going to have a breeze that's going to blow from the southwest, which is the direction that pretty well brings us from Rottnest to Sorrento. So it kind of makes sense to run it in the afternoon and use the Dr. Wind and uh, then the name obviously just came from that. This is the 20th year that the Doctor's been held, but now it's part of something much bigger, the Shore and Partners WA Race Week. It's five races over five days, with athletes vying for $265,000. That's the richest event in the history of the sport. This is massive. This is Formula One money. What happens this week could affect what happens to someone in 40 or 50 years in, in how they're set up. I think that's taken it to the next level. I mean, that's what lacked. When I won a race in the old days, you won one bottle of wine. If you put, won a big race, you've got two bottles of wine. I'm afraid you can't live on that. With Shaw and Partners, it's changing the whole dynamics of the sport, but keeping the culture the same. 
I started learning how to paddle in 2016 and I just fell in love with the sport quite frankly. What I thought would be a four to six month journey and then move on to something else has turned into a love affair. We're trying to professionalise the sport, that's really the, the bottom line with it. And uh, we're in a luxurious position that we can afford to do it. We've done it now for seven, eight years, it gets bigger every year and I think the athletes deserve to be paid. I mean they're unbelievable, the men and the women that race, incredible athletes. It's really allowed us to take this sport to the next level, to showcase it to the world. This was the first year that we had to cap the numbers at 500 and the entries sold out really, really quickly. So. It's getting big. <laughs>joke that it's pretty hard to find an excuse not to paddle because I've literally got 20 steps to get to the water, skis in the front yard, so it's just awesome. It's amazing the competition that we have within a 10 kilometre radius. We've got a lot of Ironmen that come out and paddle, we've got a lot of kayakers, Olympic kayakers, ocean paddlers, that's five or six of the best paddlers in the world at a general training session, so I think mentally as well it's good because you end up training at racing pace sort of slowly realised I'm probably not too bad at what we do here as well. So it's a fascinating sort of progression to become a doctor champion or a WA Race Week champion. Um, it was almost by mistake, not by intent, just battling it out with your mates. World titles this year was quite disappointing. I went into it feeling really good. I felt like I'd done a lot of the right things leading in. Unfortunately, the race just was horrible for me there's unfinished business, right? And uh, I'd see it as an unsuccessful season if I went across to the WA race week and didn't perform at my best. So the aim is to be back on that podium, be at the top end of that podium and um, do what I know I'm capable of. The depth and the quality of the field, it's a pretty phenomenal group of people. It's arguably the most even field the sport's ever seen. Athletes from every corner of the globe and at the very front, four-time doctor champion and two-time world champion, Corey Hill. Going out there, it feels like I know the course maybe better than everyone. Um, I know what to do in certain conditions. That being said, they're not just gonna give it to me, are they? He has a target on his back. There's so many guys that are here to take him down. There's the man from Tasmania, Tom Norton, who we haven't seen race so far this year because he became a father. Having that in my mind, I'm not sure where I'm gonna stand coming over here but I've done everything I can to think that I'm in the best position I can be. Mackenzie Heinard, he was third at the World Championships, but his form has been a little bit up and down since. I've had some bad results in the past, and generally what follows is some rather good ones, and I'm hoping that that shines through. Plus the world of stand-up paddleboarding. Michael Booth is a six-time world champion, but he's back sitting down in the surf ski, getting back to his roots. It's been a really cool journey, sort of being able to travel around the world, going to Europe, Asia, the Americas um, for six to eight months of the year and competing almost every weekend and traveling with my family. And to be able to come back in and be able to mix it up with the best of the best, it's just an incredible life I get to lead, I guess. And a whole stack of Aussies from surf lifesaving to ocean paddling and even the Olympics with two-time sprint kayaking representative Riley Fitzsimmons. Still trying to achieve the Paris goal in 2024, so hopefully there's a third Olympic Games there, but um, you know, in my off time I love to get back out in the waves, out in the ocean, it's where I like to be. But out to spoil the Aussie party is South Africa. The two nations have a long rivalry and you'd have to say at the moment that South Africa is on top. They showed that at the World Championships where Kenny Rice broke through for his first title. The Miller's Run is a downwind run from Miller's Point down to Fisher Beach. It's the favourite thing for most Cape Townian surf ski paddlers and it's probably on everyone around the world's bucket list of downwinds to do. It's always a little bit different. You never do a Miller's Run that's the same as, as the previous one. You know, it always makes it a bit of a challenge um, and I guess quite exciting. I've done some phenomenal downwinds around the world but I think there's no place like home. 
the Cape Town community has probably sculpted my whole career. Being on the foot of the Miller's Run here, you know, there's no, no other option but to do, go downwind paddling. I distinctly remember actually my first day that I, I did a Miller's Run, you know, it was, here's a boat, here's a, a life jacket. <laughs> you get in here, go around that rock and aim to the right of that hole in the mountain. And that, that was about it. It's pretty surreal that I ended up winning World Champs. Like everyone's genuinely stoked that you've won. So I'm, I'm really happy for that. And I'm really looking forward to this upcoming set of races. And I hope that the confidence from winning a race that most people wouldn't have put me down on paper to be strong at, I think I can take a lot of confidence out of that. It's been years of hard work. It's been like eight, nine years worth of it. So I think the, the expectation aside, I've done the hard work and I'm excited to live up to that expectation. Kenny's not coming alone. He's joined by the legendary Hank McGregor. He's an 11-time canoe marathon world champion. He's won the doctor before as well. So even now, at the age of 44, he's going to be so hard to stop. Yeah, what can you say? I got told nearly 15 years ago that my timeline was done from like Institute of Sports to be competitive on the international stage. And I think I just proved the critics wrong, you know, year after year. South Africa's also seen the rise of a new wave of young, hungry athletes determined to make their mark on the sport as well. I'm Josh Finn, I'm from South Africa, and yeah, obviously we had to come over for the Sean Partners WA Race Week. For everyone's main goal is to come and win the doctor, the biggest and richest race on the calendar, I think. My name is Mark Allen Keeling, I'm 24 years old now, from Cape Town, South Africa, proudly Fishhook. You kind of have to put yourself in the mix, I mean, otherwise it's a bit of a slap in the face if you don't uh, give your best. How's it? I'm Willie Hart. I'm from South Africa, 21 years old. Obviously, I'm a competitive guy, same as everyone else, so uh, it's a race I want to win. Throw in the Europeans, this week is wide open. It's my first time in Australia, so I'm really like excited to be here. In Europe, with more and more countries so are really pushing ocean ski racing, and it's exciting to be part of it. I think it's one of the hotspots for surfing in the world now, France, Spain, Germany, like all these countries in Europe that have taken up the sport quite late compared to Australia and South Africa, but it's definitely catching up. When I first started um, ocean ski paddling, there was not many women that I was racing against. Over the last couple of years, the prize money um, has been equal for men and women, and the standard has really lifted. You've got girls like, you know, Gemma Smith, Danielle McKenzie. For so long now, more than five years, so many of their races are decided by just seconds between them, and that's something that's really unusual in the sport. We're athletes, we're competitors. The goal's to win. Definitely not going to lie about that. And I think anything else, we probably come away disappointed. Um, that's because we're so hard on ourselves. I always go into every race wanting to put my best foot forward and over the past sort of really two years, I've been looking forward to getting back over here and racing and yeah, it's definitely been something that I've been targeting my training towards. So I'm originally from the Central Coast in New South Wales, but over the past sort of year, I've made the move down to the Northern Beaches and train here throughout the week. There's no better way to start the day than getting up before the sun rises. There's a peacefulness about it. There's not that many people around. It's nice to get up before the hustle and bustle sort of starts. Growing up doing surf life saving and iron woman racing, I've spent a lot of time in the ocean doing a lot of swimming and board paddling as well. But over the past sort of 18 months, I made a bit of a decision to spend a lot more time paddling and see how far I can take my kayaking with the hopes of maybe making Paris in 2024 or further on in 2028. It was unreal to win that world title over in Portugal. It was, yeah, definitely something I wasn't sure going in how I would fare. I, I sort of just kept rolling with it and I think, you know, it won't be any different when I line up over there. It would mean a lot to be the champion of the doctor. I've just absolutely loved the race, the concept behind it. Such an iconic race and one that definitely has a lot of kudos in the ocean ski paddling world. I think I typically have a pretty good approach to racing, keep it nice and relaxed and yeah, hopefully we'll go over there and get some good results. The South African women are just as strong as their men. There's Milani Van Nierkirk and also Michelle Byrne, who's a previous world champion. She's never had the chance to race against Mackenzie and Smith before. 
It's been a long time for me. I mean, I've had two kids in between starting racing and now, and I've always been wanting to come back. I think the fact that we're here and um, taking part in this, it's, it's super big for me, and I'm just so grateful to have been able to compete with all these amazing athletes um, and to get to know them better throughout the week, which is pretty awesome. Then there's the wild card in the field, American Arna Swedish, a teenage prodigy who's now starting to live up to that potential. Everyone back home is super supportive. We've got a lot of good paddlers and they're all so stoked that I'm able to come over here. And on top of all of those storylines, there's an influx of iron men and iron women. Yeah, I think it's exciting for the iron men and women to come in. I think, you know, there's probably not as much expectation. The, the specialist ocean ski paddlers are probably expected to be on the podium, but um, it definitely can be done. The, the iron men and women can mix it with the best ocean ski paddlers. I think the Iron Athletes will go pretty well. I think just coming over here, being more relaxed about it also takes that pressure off and yeah, you can just enjoy it and go as best you can. I think there's a lot to prove. I knew this sport was going to be tough. Um, I didn't realise the speed of what these guys actually paddle at. If the runs pop up, I know I'm in with a chance to be up with those top girls. So just try and stick to that and hopefully the win comes for me. There's so much sort of hype and curiosity around the sport right now, it's certainly on the way up. So I think a lot of the Ironmen and Iron Women are going to be watching this week and saying, hey, maybe I should sort of have a crack at that double dip. It's a world-class field with a quarter of a million dollars on the line. Athletes coming from every corner of the globe to try and take their share. It's no surprise that so many of them have built their entire racing year around trying to take this thing out. Welcome to the Shoreham Partners WA Race Week. Five events over the next seven days for a quarter of a million dollars. This is the first stop, the West Coast downwind, and the wind is up. I was speaking to my wife before the race and I said, I'm just not nervous. Then we get on the start line, the nerves start to come, you start to get these little doubts. And the women are off. I've never actually seen five to ten girls all lining up and still pushing the pace within the first five k's. There were so many of us still around. Having never done the race before, I wasn't exactly sure of what line to take. I just knew I had to make the most of the start and try and get out nice and clean and away from everyone and get into a nice rhythm. Back to the boys now, but they're creeping past the start line. You know, when you've got this wind that's pushing you forward, it's very hard even for professionals to even stay still. I sort of could see the movie playing out already and um, yeah, you don't want to be, get caught out. Um, you don't always want to be the good, good Samaritan that's sitting at the back telling everybody else what to do. You, uh, I've learned you're not a race organiser and you're not an official, so don't act like one and uh, just go with the flow, you know. The men are away now too and they're going for it. I really just went out hard. I had no idea where I was going to be and to my surprise about like probably one or two K in I was, I was actually leading the race. I wasn't sure if Hank and Kenny were a lot faster than what Corey was so trying to back the right horse to put yourself in the right position and it turns out that, that Corey was probably the fastest one. As I was pushing out to sea I sort of just went let's keep this line and come home strong. Keep comfortable, it's a long day, it's an hour and a half, so you've got to really pace yourself. Corey set himself up really well from the get-go. Really good show of confidence from him, and that definitely paid off once we hit the 13, 14K mark. You know, that guy's winning races, not just because he's there on the start line, but it's because he's making smart choices. We're into the final kilometres now. Corey Hill looks to be home, but there's a real race unfolding for second. Norton, McGregor and Olympian Riley Fitzsimmons. I was waiting for my time being a sprint kayaker to hit the wall and start fatiguing really badly. But, um, you know, the further we got into the race, the runs just got better and better. And I, I don't know, I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. About a couple hundred metres from the last turning can, there was this big band of uh, seaweed there. And um, Tommy cut my line through the seaweed, so I followed him through. And then Hank went through and he got a bit of weed on his rudder. So it was a bit unfortunate for him, but fortunate for me. I was a bit disappointed. But uh, that's racing. I've travelled around the world, raced around the world, and uh, you know, if, if you're not big enough to accept what happens, well, then you shouldn't be in the start line. It's the four-time Doctor Champion Corey Hill who claims the opening race. What a message to send for the start of race week.
Look, it's great. I mean, I've uh, started up where I left off back in 2019. Perth seems to do really good for me. Tom Norton holds on for second place, just ahead of Riley Fitzsimmons. Hank McGregor finishes fourth, while Michael Booth takes fifth. I knew Danielle McKenzie was out wider than me. I could see her out of the corner of my eye and I sort of went, right, this is my time to go and I just really attacked every runner that I could. Gemma Smith is going to land the first blow in the battle for the Shore and Partners WA Race Week. She's your winner of the West Coast downwind ahead of Danielle McKenzie with Michelle Byrne in third. Feels really great um, and was really, really fun out there and yeah, stoked to take the win in the end. It's a huge week and this year event organisers have added so much to the Shore and Partners WA Race Week but maybe the biggest addition is the Big Top 10. That's the new event headquarters, the home base for all of the events. You know, there's a lot of downtime and whilst the athletes are off getting physios and massages and all of those sorts of things, you know, you have six, seven hundred people. We think next year it'll be a thousand people um, all hanging around the same coffee shops for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And what's wonderful about the sport is it's one of the few sports you can line up with the professionals. You can't do it in tennis, you can't do it in Formula One, you can't do it in baseball. That's something that's very special to our sport. The top guys have got plenty of time for the guys that aren't so good. You can go and walk up to Corey Hill and he's gonna give you time of day. If I was playing golf and I walked up to Tiger Woods, there's no chance you wouldn't even get close to him. And I think that's what makes the sport grow. Monday was really an appreciation from my business partner and I um, to really thank all the people that have made this event happen. So, you know, we had 120 people under the marquee. You know, it was just awesome to have, first of all, all of our staff from our Perth business. Second of all, to have all the athletes, male and female, which are great, it brings us all together. That's what Monday night was all about, a celebration, really, and a thank you. I had an old surf ski from 1950s. It had been in a shed in Manly for a number of years and I think the impact that Earl Evans and Alan Zeon have made on the event deserved them to have a, a, a long-lasting legacy and the only way I could really do that was by creating a, a trophy in their name. I actually started to shed a tear, I had to look the other way, it was very emotional for me. You know, I'm really a nobody in the sport to be frank, I get maybe a little bit, you know, risen to the surface because we've put up the money and we've showcased it. But quite frankly, it's not about Sean Punters, it's not about me, it's about the group. So it was pretty humbling, it made me very emotional and I'm amazingly grateful and appreciative. Um, you know, it's sort of something that hopefully will be here forever. Uh, awesome. Race two of the Shore and Partners WA Race Week and what's supposed to be a dash up the coast has been met by strong, unfavourable winds. This has forced organisers into some last minute changes. Macca phoned us in a flat panic. <laughs> it's at City Beach, don't go to Fremantle. Yeah, It was a big call from organisers, but ultimately it was the right one. And it also meant that we got to see something that was really exciting in the sport as well, a circuit course. Three laps of three kilometres each it was always going to serve up some really exciting racing. I've been in a lot of these loop races now, so I know where to sit, how to sit. Um, it just hurts. We've got a start and the women have flown off the line and look who's in front already. Danielle McKenzie and I sort of came together and pretty much from there we were just neck and neck the whole way. We're about to see some serious speed here. Fitzsimmons dropping the hammer, he's giving it everything. I probably didn't attack it the smartest way and I went out really hard and, and tried to lead the first lap and I, I think I just ended up cooking myself. I thought it would slow down after the first lap but Gordon Harbrach from Germany had other ideas. Full power paddling. Heart rate was up, 170, and they just uh, tried to make the best of it. It's never good to have someone uh, pulling away from the pack, but I knew that he was on his own. If we could get organised, that the, the pack generally catches the breakaway. Smith and Mackenzie are miles in front of the rest of the women, and they're slogging it out one on one. It was a grudge match. 
paddles going everywhere at every turn. There was cutting off, the boys coming past, so that played a really significant role in our race. It's hard because you don't want um, to interfere with each other's race, but when it's that loop course and you're starting so quickly behind each other, it can get a little bit of interference. I actually ended up yelling out to Gemma, hey, let's just do our own race. And she unfortunately stayed on the tail of his wash, so I just had the only other option to sit on her tail. We're into the last lap now, and finally, Gordon Harbrecht has been caught by the chase pack. Norton, Hill and South African Mark Keeling approaching the final turn. I just thought that this is my spot, you know, like, if I'm going to win it, I've got to go. So out of the last can, I just decided to go as hard as I could for the last 2K. It's a drag race now between Norton and Harbrecht. They're going stroke for stroke. They said in the briefing that we had to drag our skis up to the first row of flags. That's unusual. And I said to Gordon, um, so we're we going to drag our skis. And he looked at me and I think it was my Aussie slang. <laughs> he just kind of looked at me confused and said, what do you mean? <laughs> They're both up and Norton turns on the speed. He won't be caught from there and that is a great win. Harbreck finishes second, Hill in third. It's my weakness. I never won on beaches in my life. There's no way in Germany like to just run on the beach. People will, will like watch you. Well, what are you doing? I mean, <laughs> you can go to the street much faster. I just thought I'll try my best and whatever happens, happens and pay it off. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, gets, gets my tail up for the rest of the week. The women's race has come down to this. They're on the same wave and it's Danielle McKenzie first across the line. What was Gemma Smith doing? We were definitely sort of had a few words. We were sort of very confused around what happened and had heard in the briefing that we had to drag our skis up to that first flag and then run. Did you hear that part of the briefing? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Look, honestly, I was probably pretty disappointed in myself. I chose not to listen to some very key instructions. My thinking came across as all right, so they just want us to drag our skis so they don't get in the way of other athletes. Gemma and myself, we've obviously been having a bit of a battle for the last few years. Absolute amazing, talented athlete and someone who I really respect. I think in the heat of the moment, there's a lot of adrenaline going on and a lot of emotions running high as well when you've just been, you know, pushing yourself for the last 45 minutes. She's such an incredible athlete, but also a really amazing person. And um, yeah, it's great to be able to continuously test yourself against one another. At the end of the day, we leave racing on the water um, and we're still best of mates, I hope. <laughs>afternoon was absolutely incredible down at City of Perth Beach for the Shore and Partners Nipper Clinic. I think we had about 350 nippers and they were all just loving it, but we were loving it as well. <laughs> Hands down the biggest nipper clinic I've ever seen. And it was just epic, you know, we had the best Iron Men and Iron Women. You know, we've got Shannon X9 here, we've got Ali Day here, Georgia Miller, Hall of Famer. Like, it's not every day that these kids, any kids for that matter, get to do a nipper clinic with some of the greatest this sports have ever seen. And for us, it's awesome. We were able to give back to a sport that, whether you're an ocean paddler or more of the Ironman, we've all in Australia come from this background. So to be able to give back to the community that made us who we are as athletes is really phenomenal for us. I think that Shaw and Partners, just their whole makeup of Earl Evans driving it so well and Alan Zion in, in the background a little bit more, but also so passionate about it. They're just teaching people that giving back is so important. Their motto of live life and give back is just resonating with so many people. Just 
Just one day of rest, now the athletes are back at Fremantle for race three, 12 kilometres up the coast with a light tailwind, so the pace is going to be on. After Tuesday, there was a lot of people already hurting, so to get it back out there and, and hurt ourselves again, leading into what is the doctor, it's quite a difficult sort of headspace to get into, but you know, the gun goes and, and we're off. It's a standing start today, and it's a quick one for the girls. Straight into their skis, they're going to turn a marker just off the beach, then start the sprint up to City of Perth. Gemma got ahead a couple of times, and then I'd pull up next to her, and then she'd get ahead, and then I'd pull up next to her. And so that was pretty much the whole race. The boys aren't too far behind today. Another furious start for them. This is going to be carnage at the can. Oh, look at that. At the bottom of the frame, Mackenzie Heinard has been thrown out of his boat. It's a log jam and the leaders are getting away. I was in the lead for probably a good eight kilometres in the middle there. These shorter races are becoming more common where it's 45 minutes to an hour. And it just seems as though it's not quite long enough to break people or be broken yourself. This is a tight finish. They're all in a bunch. Who's coming around that corner first? It's Tom Norton. Back-to-back -back wins here at the Shore and Partners WA Race Week. A win's a win, and um, I'm stoked with that. Saturday's the big one for me, and I think I'm in good form. Um, just got to make it count now. It's another sprint finish between Mackenzie and Smith. It's on again, and Mackenzie's going to get there. She's back in the winner's circle. What a fight back this has been. Look, I guess I have known that I can win. So to come across the line in first place, the belief is there and, and now I've been able to prove it that I can do it. Welcome to the Sean Partners Dash for Cash. It's the day before the doctor, but nobody has their feet up because there's $15,000 up for grabs. This is the dash for cash, and the format is simple. Paddlers are lined up 300 metres off the beach and sprint back to the sand. Some survive, the rest are eliminated. Last paddler standing claims the cash. Yeah, we started it actually a couple of years ago in one of the Summer of Surf um, events, and it went huge and then we incorporated it into this event. Just a great spectacle. Three rounds down, this is our women's final. Smith and Mackenzie are there and Iron Woman Georgia Miller, along with Massey and Woodhouse. It's a little run, but Smith's on it. This could be enough. Yes, it is. Gemma Smith, take a bow. Certainly didn't expect it. I was actually a bit surprised with my turn of speed today. So looking up for tomorrow, and hopefully that's a big run of the week. So hopefully, yeah, can go over there and put in a good race. Have a look at that power. This is unbelievable from the men's finalists. Australian Olympian Riley Fitzsimmons, Canadian Olympian Simon McTavish, Noah Havard, Mark Keeling, Mitch Trim, and it's all down to a sprint finish up the beach. Who's got the legs? Fitzsimmons does. We've seen this all before. He wins the dash for cash. It was a real thrill to race today. A lot of depth here in the field. A couple of Olympians in that top five there, so awesome. I'm so happy to take out the win. While the athletes generally put their feet up on a Friday afternoon, Dean and his team jump in the car and head to Fremantle for the biggest job of the week, loading the barge to get all of the skis over to Rottnest Island. Down the bottom, guys. Uh, it's like Tetris. Okay, that one can come up here. It gets um, uh, half the field over there, so it's very important. It's probably the hardest thing to do as well, so. It's always a big job, but unknown to everyone else, Dean was wrestling with an even bigger problem the wind. Everyone was oblivious to what was happening behind the scenes and all of the meetings that were going on to try and sort this thing out. It was only when everyone turned up for the pre-race briefing that night that we learned just how close the race came to actually being called off. We cannot run the race from Rottnest uh, when the wind exceeds 20 knots. So all, all the forecasts are telling us that it's in the 20s. In fact, it was at a point where we were not going to Rottnest tomorrow. I think it stunned everyone. We've been waiting three years to be able to have the chance to race again and we came so close to being denied that at the last opportunity. I was a little bit nervous this morning but it's come back down. 
and it looks like it's going to be well within our ability to run the event. With that now resolved, the race was on and it was time for the doctor. If you see a bunch of paddlers coming into Sorrento Beach, it's the final race of the five event WA race week. It's the big one, the doctor from Rottnest to Sorrento. And the best person to speak to on this is the race director, Dean Gardner, and he joins me now. Good morning, Dean. This sounds quite something and quite gruelling. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. It'd have to be the biggest event on the international calendar. You know, it features the best paddlers in the world. And what sort of condition are they in when they get back to Sorrento? Uh, are their arms falling off? <laughs> uh, for some, I'm sure, but I think for the elite guys and girls, it's uh, just another day in the park. The race itself starts in the afternoon, but the doctor is a whole day event. Dan and his crew go at sunrise on the barge while the rest of the field get a slight sleep in, then they get to jump on the ferry and make their way across the channel. It is such a spectacle because there's not many races where beforehand you've got to make an hour ferry trip over to your start destination and the whole time you know that you've got to paddle back all that way. When we were on the boat, you could see the swell starting to come up, the wind was already blowing and it definitely got the nerves up. I was enjoying the rock and the, the boat works. So I was like, this is cool. <laughs> um, and then it started getting a bit windy and I was like, oof, conditions look fantastic. We've got a, a good crew of people unloading and um, then when people arrive they've got to find their ski and put rudders back on and, and kit it all up so it's a, it's a busy sort of first part of the morning. Found your boat mate. Took me a while but I got there. Hiding in plain sight. Some people have started the race and had their fins fall out. Some people have arrived on the island without their fins. It's even worse. I'm feeling so good. I'm going to do the doctor, one of the most amazing paddles in the world, and I feel excited about it. It's got everything this week, and we love every moment of it. This is the nervous part of the day, just waiting. You know, you've done all your training, you've done everything you can, and now it's just the nervous part. Bring it on, that's all I can say. We've pretty well done everything we can to get you guys here, so now it's your chance to get yourself back. <laughs> Three years of waiting, seven days of racing, and this is the main event of the Shore and Partners WA Race Week, The Doctor. Corey Hill's out for a fourth straight win. While the women's title feels like a two-horse race, can Danielle McKenzie get one back over Gemma Smith? You've flown to Perth, you've caught the ferry across the Rottnest Island. Then there's one last curveball that's thrown at athletes. We're away in the 2022 Doctor and what an incredible shot from the Shore and Partners chopper. Do you go for the race one hotspot? Two and a half thousand dollars for the first paddler to get past the one kilometre turning mark. That's about five minutes of flat out paddling, the lactic acid setting in, blades being thrown everywhere. It is furious stuff. In my head, if there was an opportunity, I'd take that opportunity, but if it wasn't there, then I wasn't going to push too hard. Maddie Smith, being a flatwater kayaker, I sort of had an inkling that she'd want to get out in that sort of first K when it was a little bit more protected and probably, yeah, try and take it out. It's starting to tighten up out in front. Gemma Smith is in the box seat for the race one hotspot. Oh, like I'm close enough and I couldn't see anyone's nose on my side, so I might as well just go for it. Gemma Smith has put her foot down for the race one hotspot and it's a comfortable win in the end. She has a boat length on Danny McKenzie, who looks like she's going out on her own. I knew the lines that I was going to work and I knew well, looking at my watch and looking at obviously on the beach, I literally just wanted to go my own way. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. This is going to be something special. The biggest race of the year, an all out war on water. Look at the paddles flying. Have you ever seen anything like that? I had a good start, actually. I think I cut off like 10,000 people to my left. No, to my right. Um, but I was in front of them, so I was like, sorry. It's a ferocious start and the pack is forming now, but where is Corey Hill going? The defending champion is off course. I think he's going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I seemed to get a little run and went with it. I realised that I was actually heading to a, a reef marker and not the hotspot marker, so that seemed to be pretty much what I did all day. 
I've never had such a relaxed start before. I found myself in the top three and almost had to go at the hot spot, but I really had to control myself and remember what I'm here for, you know. I was here for, for winning the doctor. Just two remain for the race one hot spot. It's Noah Havard up against Yuli Hart. They're going for it now. A little wobble from Hart. Noah Havard's going to take the cash. Hank had warned me that if you go too hard in that first bit for a certain turn point, um, you, you might suck gas for like the next few Ks, and I did, and I was like struggling. Don't rest now, boys. The real race is only just beginning because Kenny Rice is really getting going. Mark Keeling's there too, but we haven't seen much of him this week. During the week, I wasn't very happy with my results, so I think I had something to prove. Definitely more to myself than to everyone. Kenny just got out there and started putting on the hurt, and I realized that he was going for it, so I decided to follow him, and then everyone else kind of just faded from there. You're very blind when you go out like that. You don't really know where everyone is. But I was aware of Corey and the other guys going quite sort of high, which I was quite confused with because I was heading towards the marker and I'd said to myself before, you know, find a rhythm, don't worry about other people and just, you know how to do it and you can do it better than them. So on the boat ride across, I saw that there was quite a southerly and my mind was made up then to head south and come back with You look at the people that I was around and, and racing at that time, we had Tom, Riley, Hank, Josh, myself. From the week that we've had, I thought, oh good, we're all here. So I just thought, I'll oh, keep conservative, I'll keep conservative. About 15 kilometres into it, that's when I really sort of, it, it dawned on me that I think we've made a bit of a mistake. They've been side by side all week. Now Mackenzie and Smith are miles apart. I actually just thought to myself, hey look, I'm really, really strong at catching runs. I'm gonna work the runs. And it's really exciting because it does mean that you do need to make your own choices. You need to choose your own line and then you need to back yourself during the race. As soon as you lose sight of one another, you've got absolutely no idea where anyone else is in the ocean. And it's so cool, it's just you and you know yourself out there trying to make the most of every run. Mackenzie's charging ahead. It looks like a huge lead over Smith. But who's that with her? That's American Anna Swedish coming up fast. They didn't have a great start and it took me a while to kind of find a rhythm, but I saw Gemma ahead of me and also Michelle Byrne. I mean, the waves were so good. I was kind of just like having a good time and slowly catching up to them. And then I like came up next to Gemma and we were kind of just going back and forth all the way. Anna Swedish had an absolutely amazing paddle and I sort of knew where she was and knew that Danny probably might have been a bit ahead, but it's so hard to know. Being able to dice with her just after she won the world championship felt just unreal. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to show that the US does have good athletes start coming through. There's big moves being made at the front of the men's field. Rice, Hart and Keeling are in front on the inside line, while Corey Hill is in serious trouble out wide with Norton, Fenn and McGregor. And the cardinal marker, the 20 kilometre point of the race, is coming up fast. I was pretty confused, I couldn't see it. I, I really thought I had um, messed it up, you know, especially because everyone else is so far, like, to the south. Kenny Rice is the first to the Cardinal marker. He'll start the run home in front, just ahead of Yuli Hart and Mark Keeling. Coming into the marker, I sort of had a squiz over my right shoulder and I saw who, what I thought was Tom Norton. Um, ended up being early Hart, sort of bearing down on me quite fast, coming down from the south. I trained with Kenny quite a lot, so um, when we do uh, Miller's runs back home, generally he's in front of me and generally I have the task of hunting him down. So today I was just like, oh, I'm going to catch him. Maybe I'll go past this time around. If you get to that marker, it's pretty hard to beat the person who gets there first. Even if it's 50 metres, they've got to kill themselves to catch up to you. I, I think I'd used up all my matches by that point. Um, and then I was going to go for a goo and have a bit of a drink and then Mark surfed up on my left and I was like, oh, 
can't risk it. <laughs> I have to dice. Yeah, I won't lie, it's pretty buggered. <laughs> my forearms were pretty much blown and so were my shoulders. So I just knew that I had to surf my way up to the beach and if I got a better line, I could at least take Uli and if I got a great line, I could take on Kenny. Danielle McKenzie has a stranglehold on this race. She's looking so strong out in front with a huge lead over Smith and Swedish. They're locked in a very tight battle just ahead of Bern Van Nierkirk and Iron Woman Hannah Scully. Once you get 10, 15 k's into the race, honestly, you have really no idea where you are. You sort of try and have a look at the lead boats or the helicopter that might give you an idea of where the next girl might be, but it's honestly still really unknown until you cross that finish line. They've pushed themselves to the limit over 28 kilometres, but the title is still there for the taking for any of the three South Africans. Mark could come in and run me up the beach here, because, I mean, it's kind of like a wounded buffalo running up the beach, me. <laughs> Rice does hit the sand first, and that's a lead that's too big to close down. The world champion, and now the doctor champion. King Kenny Rice takes the main event of the Shore and Partners WA Race Week. Yeah, unbelievable. I'm pretty stoked. Just back my line, just believed in it, and I went for it. Eh? Um, yeah, good to back up the world's winner, the win at the Doctor, the Aussies World Champs, <laughs> uh, especially after a pretty dismal week. Now it's on for second. Keeling and Hart, it's a sprint finish. I know that he's a much better runner than me, but uh, me having the better line, I just knew if I gave it my all, I would secure second, so I tried my best and turned out to be good. Fairly sure I closed the gap down on the sand, so I'm proud of that. <laughs> the South Africans didn't have a podium all week, and they just had one, two, three. In fact, I think they had five of the top six, so talk about coming to the occasion when it mattered. We're all good mates, but certainly at the paddling community back home, there's very much a rivalry. They're really stoked when you do get one up on the Aussies, especially in the rugby or cricket or something like that. So when you can back it up in a surf ski, it, it means a lot. I think that that also puts fuel on the fire a little bit for the, for the Aussies, and um, we don't want to let that happen again. This feels like a victory lap for Danielle McKenzie after what's been a testing week. Now she's back on top, and she's about to defend her doctor title. Um, look, um, I think I took it all in once I hit the beach and I saw that uh, finishing banner and just the emotions just came across me. I definitely had a moment to myself running up the beach and saying, this is it, this is the big one, this is the race week, um, it's all mine. Back-to-back -back doctor titles for Danielle McKenzie and she's going to take out the Shore and Partners WA Race Week as well, a two-time champion. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, the doctor obviously is the big one of the race week and so to come away with the win is, is absolutely unreal. The battle for second is going all the way to the sand. Swedish is ahead, but Smith is coming through on a wave. This could bring her level, another sprint, and Smith is going to take it out. What a week it's been, and what a battle she's had with Danielle McKenzie. We've been so close in all the races across the week, and she's an incredible paddler, and in stuff like that, she really shows her form, and she really deserved the win today. I get a ton of enjoyment out of seeing the smiles on people's faces and them coming up to me after the event and telling me that they had a fantastic race. It was the, it was the best experience of their life. That's pretty rewarding. Um, you know, we've tried to make this week a week where people go, wow, you know, that was a fantastic week. This year has been full of ups and downs. So to bring it all together and finally come home with a solid race win uh, amongst some amazing paddlers. Uh, it's just absolutely unbelievable. It's been a huge week. The body has definitely fatigued throughout the week and the doctor definitely tops it off. It's a race that I've 
Traditionally, I have never done well at. Um, I had a really good result in 2014 and sort of when I was 19, and I've just never been able to replicate that and winning a world title and now finally the doctor, is, it's really special. I think I've always sort of not seen myself as being at the top of the pack. Um, and now it's quite cool, you know, it's like a, a really big confidence booster. You're not just going to races to make up numbers, you're going there with expectation and purpose. It justifies those, those hard hours. I like building things, I like growing things, I like building tribes of people. And for us, we're just trying to build a bit of a tribe around this wonderful sport. And like all things, we just, at, at Shaw and Partners, like to make things bigger and better every time we do something. So next year, I have no doubt, the event will be far more international, far more competitors, far more entries, and it'll be a bigger festival than we've ever seen before.